Well, I think we're going to get started. Um, hello, my name is Devon Miller. Um, I'm with Western Michigan University. I'm be your moderator for this session. It is my pleasure to induce, introduce uh, Michelle Ellington, uh, the president of the CFTA, and she's going to be giving a presentation on grounds management for the University of Kentucky. Thank you. Okay. So I wear a couple hats. Uh, Obviously, CFTA is one, but um, my first and foremost is my UK hat. Is this okay? Everybody hear me? Okay. So I have been with the University of Kentucky for over a decade, for um, 12 years, going on 13. And when I first started there, it was a CAD shop, no GIS, um, uh, not, not many scanned documents, all in a vault. And I was actually working as a consultant, and they hired the firm I was working for to do a pilot GIS project in Arc IMS. Anybody remember that? Yeah, yeah. I I was an Arc IMS person. Arc Info built and clean coverages back in the day. Uh, master of two dead languages, Avenue, <laughs> AML. So you know, long time ago. And we started with this pilot, and then the university decided it was worth the investment. And the little carrot was hung in front of me to come to UK as the first GIS analyst for the University of Kentucky. And I was enamored. I was like, wow, what an opportunity to build an enterprise GIS from the ground up. That's actually a panel that I'm going to be sitting on with Liz and Larissa, who are both in here today, tomorrow. And so it's not easy. In fact, it's extremely painful. And in fact, you know, back in those times, there were, you know, a lot of CAD folks. There was, uh, you know, um, totally different organizational structure as today. Today, I have um, in my department of uh, a couple different buckets, but we have 30 people in our department. That's huge. We have 30 people. And so in my geospatial team, we have 14 that I manage. And that's students and temps and full-time employees. Um, we have reorged several times, and we basically uh, manage the data from, you know, build design. We are the official room number authorizer of, of, of floor plans on space. And then we carry that through the life cycle to the archives. And we are the vault also where the documents get received um, at the end of construction. And we manage all the critical data sets, the, the, uh, the GIS base map, utilities, seven infrastructures, uh, floor plans. We have over 14 million square feet of interior space in an enterprise GIS that is one-to-one -one accurate to our university space system of record. So we have fixed all of the workflows so that all the construction areas on campus contact us, notify us of all campus renovations. And sure, stuff does slip. But the focus is that if it's wrong in the floor plan, it's wrong in the space system. If we fix the floor plan, we fix the space system. So it's one piece flow. All the information is current and accurate across systems. So as we are growing more and more uh, comfortable with relying on the critical data sets, um, the other areas on campus are now being squeezed to communicate their value to upper management. And they need to do that through metrics. And so whereas once we weren't really relied on for this information, now the VP is squeezing them to really uh, show their use case. And they're coming to us and saying, we need help. We need to show what we're doing. And we need to defend it, or we need to uh, plan for change on campus. And so that was kind of the result of this project, was to determine the staffing needs from data-driven results. And so we have our, our grounds flower beds, a lot of turf grass, you know, manicured um, sidewalk turf areas, and um, it needs to look pretty. And some areas look to need to look prettier than others. And what are those areas? Well, we kind of have it in our heads, but where is it really? And so, you know, also what's the influx of keeping a grounds area clean and, and managed? Um, well, it changes. In the summer, it has a different level of need versus the winter. And where, what do we do with all those employees that now we have on staff to manage the grounds during the winter? And so it's toggling this use of our people and our staffing, and we're using GIS and metrics to do this. 
So I'm gonna go through this, obviously. I just did my introduction. So the question is the what if scenario. That's what we're trying to do, is figure out the what if. What if we knew all of our landscaped areas on campus, all of our pervious areas, all the areas we needed to maintain, and we had that square footage? What if we knew that? Now, what if we knew where all of our levels of attention were? So what's important? Obviously, by the president's house, it better look nice all the time, always. Down by our south campus, not as big of a deal. You know, that could be a lower level of attention. And so if you kind of can, like, get out of your heads these areas that kind of follow those needs, now we can start having a conversation. So once we get that, we can start looking at what our employee needs are by month. And we can start planning. But really, it comes down to what are we maintaining? And it's very interesting to see this slide, because what if all of a sudden we do hit very big budget constraints, and we do need to outsource something? What could we outsource in this model based on our staff needs, and what would that mean to our staff needs, and how could we get that money balanced within our budget to meet the budget cuts? And so this is what we are doing. We're developing this tool, and we've developed this process, and we are relying on APA guidelines to serve as our beacon, okay? So that is what today's presentation will be on. I will show you our strategy, and I will show you uh, what's called the staffing metrics or the matrices criteria. Some of this is gonna be really dry, I'm gonna warn you, it's math. If you love math, you're gonna love this, okay? But it's, a, it's, it's very cool, um, and I think you'll find it useful. We're gonna go over a data overview, les lessons learned, and then end with um, the next steps. So this is kind of it. This is it in a nutshell. What we did is we kind of broke this up into three pots. So we pulled from MAPA guidelines, we use our enterprise GIS, and we relied on our grounds personnel knowledge. So with, our enter with the grounds, um, uh, the APA guidelines, there were basically two chapters that really focused on this, chapter four and five. And so with four, it just said, you know, here's some GPS collection strategies, here's some mapping strategies, and it just kind of recommended like a best practice of how to do it. Chapter five went into the detail of what is a level of, t of attention one, two, three, four, five, six. And it broke it down into what are the different types of tasks that need to occur for all those levels. And I'm going to get into this. And so then it gave us these calculation parameters, which again, it will be better served to discuss in the following slides. As far as the enterprise GIS, we really just relied on our, our known uh, database. We had all the campus um, green space. Now we could just cut it up into different pieces based on what it really was. Um, and of course, that gives us the calculated square footage. But the grounds knowledge is really what made this come to life. They know where everything is. They know where the flower beds are, uh, shrub areas, natural areas, green roofs. And so we just could basically give them collector and the data, and they could attribute it and take it out in the field. So that's what we did. So we use ArcGIS Collector. Um, it actually took two surveys, because the first time we did it, um, we did it, we ran it, we ran the results and the numbers, and, 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 and they were kind of like shocking, and we didn't know why, and I'm gonna show you more about this later. And so we had to tweak it, we had to go back and realize that like, oh, we had this whole area of flower, of a shrub area, but flower beds actually require more maintenance time. And so we need to go in there and put the maintenance, to put the flower beds in those shrub areas. So one polygon now needs to have like, three polygons to denote the detail because it really does matter with the final calculations. So we had to go back and fine tune our surveys to really make sure that we were capturing the right information. That took two surveys for us. The matrices uh, was another really interesting thing, and I'm going to show you. We made these like, very detailed matrix tables, and at the end of the day, we kind of threw away like 70% of them. 
It was very interesting. <laughs> a little painful when we realized that, but that's what you do, right? You learn. I'll show you more about that. And then we also developed these GIS tools, which was funny too, because we developed these GIS tools. And at the end of the day, we threw those away too. We didn't use those. And now our process is very simple. And so I'm going to show you the results and some of our graphical outputs. So, but let's talk about what this is. What am I talking about? Are we talking the same language? Okay, so these are the categories of UK. We determine that our categories that we maintain include um, flower beds, natural areas, shrub areas, turf main water, I'm sorry, turf main, which is like these large open spaces. I'm sorry, I take that back. This is turf open. Um, I, I walked up to my slides and now I can't see where I'm reading, right? So um, the turf open areas are these large open spaces. Uh, you can use different size mowers for this as opposed to down in campus where you have to use smaller um, equipment and you also have to edge and do much more maintenance, right? So then you have your water areas permeable pavement, that's an area you need to maintain, and weed, rain gardens. And then we have two different types of green roofs. We have intensive green roofs and these extensive or tray systems. This adds up. And so when we were looking at this and trying to deduce what we are, these were our buckets. And those were our maintenance tasks. And a lot of these tasks, they cross over all these categories. And I'll show you what this looks like. So I'm not going to read the different tasks for the different categories. Um, but the point that I'm showing you is that we started finding the patterns and we started finding the commonalities across this because at the end of the day, this is gonna be a tool and the tool is going to be such that it'll be an option that you can choose a rain garden, you can choose a green roof, but you can also choose this for if you're doing snow removal for a parking lot or a driveway. And then your task can also be ranked by the priority, priority one, priority two, based on the snow access needs. So we're gonna go into the hardscape next. This is softscape. Next is going to be hardscape, and it's all going to trickle down to the one lump pile of how much staff do we need, and by month. So these are the calculation factors. So for an employee that works 40 hours a week, they're not working 40 hours a week. There is break time. For someone who is a grounds personnel employee, there's also travel time to the job site. So APA recommends 75% of an employee's whole working week to be task-oriented time. And this comes to play when you're um, doing the calculation factors, the math. So then there's task frequency. And this includes um, per season and the level of attention. So for example, and I'll just read the example because it, it does really help. Um, green roofs are fertilized with a frequency of twice per season for a level of one care. So if it's a, if it's a really high profile area, it, it needs to look good, level of one, it needs to be fertilized twice a season. And once for a level of two care. Now, fertilization is not an applied task for a level of five care. Okay, you start to feel this, so you, it's, it's a little complicated, but if you start thinking about it, it makes sense. And I'm gonna show you a table that's gonna break this down a little bit more. So you have your task rate time, your task frequency, and then is an applied task. Do you do it or do you not? It's that simple, okay? So then the last calculation factors we're gonna talk about are seasons, months, and minutes. So you have to determine what your season is. You know, in, in our, my part of the country, we have like a 30-week season. You know, in Alaska, their season <laughs> for warm weather is probably a lot shorter. Okay? So ours is 30 weeks. 
And then you do months and minutes, the occurrences of a task per month, and minutes is a time to complete 1,000 square feet. So that's the kind of the number. If we can determine that it takes 200 minutes to weed a flower bed of a, of a, a thousand square, square foot of flower bed, then that's kind of what we're talking about. So everything is a thousand square feet for the most part. So in this example, I think it's what I just said, it takes 200 minutes to prepare a thousand square feet of flower bed and beds are prepared once in April and once in October. Sounds simple. So let's look at the matrix. This is our table. So you can see on the left are the maintenance tasks. And then you can see the task time per minutes. And this is just a discussion. How long does it take? Now, APA also has its recommendations for how long this takes. And for the most part, it should take us about the same. If we're using the same tools and the right equipment, it should take us the same time. And then is it an applied task, and how is the frequency? And then there's these things called the adjustment factor in these times. And for what it's worth, as we start looking at these slides, you're going to see this italicized gray. Everywhere where there's italicized gray, it's a formula, and it's being pushed into another table, and it's, and it's, and it's, uh, it's automatic, so to speak. So really, only the other things are the ones that can change, and you can change them, and then the math gets pushed through the tool. Okay? So in this case, with frequency, being twice per season. Let's start with weekly. So if you have 30 weeks in the season and that's weekly, weekly equals one. If it's two times per season, you take two divided by 30, which is your 30 weeks of a season, and that's your factor of the 0.067. And so if you're doing it every day, which is five, you're doing five divided by one, which is weekly, and you get five. This is just math. Hurt your head a little bit, but it's just math. Now, we only did levels one through four, because that's all that we're doing for flower beds on our campus. We're not doing going into level five. We have to take care of all the flower beds or they're going to die. <laughs> okay. So now you start seeing more data that kind of hurts your head even more. Now, this, again, is these conversations that we're having with the grounds personnel to build this information. Is it an applied task? What does it look like? What does it feel like? But this doesn't really tell me anything. I don't know about you, but I can't read this. I want to see. Across levels one through four, what's the difference? So we graphed it. So this is more, I think, what our brains can consume. So you know, if you're looking at for a level one, you're doing a lot of policing by hand. You're also doing a lot more watering. You know, whereas a lot of the mulching, I mean, all that stuff kind of stays around the same. So this is where we started tweaking the the the, the numbers to get the best fit for where we thought that our our time should be spent doing things. So it got a little bit more complicated because we were looking at APA guidelines and we were using it as a guide and, and we were actually creating the matrices based on where we want it to be and maybe sometimes where we were now. It was kind of this hybrid. Um, and what we realized is were we really doing the same thing as APA? And I'll show you what that means. So we built those matrices and the concepts, and we plugged in the numbers, and we, and we pulled it over. But at the end of the day, we were like, well, are we really doing what APA said that they're doing? And so we, we compared the information across, and we actually took the time now to go back and to plug this in. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to jump forward. So on the right side is what we get from APA. Okay, It's a book. That's all you get is a book. So it's hard to know from a book what, you're gonna, what your results are. So, so in, first, we kind of used that as a guide. We plugged in our numbers and built our matrices. But then we went back when the numbers were getting really crazy. And we're like, well, what, what is APA doing? We, need, we need, probably need to look more at, at this. So that's where we went back. And we actually plugged in APA's numbers exactly from the book. And we mapped it. And we started seeing these red. The red are different than APA. How is UK different than APA? And so what we realized is when we mapped it out is, how come UK is watering and APA isn't for level one? We were shocked. How did we miss that? Because our numbers were so much higher than we expected. Well, level one for APA has irrigation systems. It's interesting, you know. So you, you can't necessarily be exactly like APA. It can't be, you know, 
uh, one to one, so to speak. But when you're comparing and you are using Apple guidelines, you you have to compare apples to apples while you're doing this to really understand where you're getting to to have that conversation. Um, and I'll I'll wrap this up in the lessons learned. So again, we kind of like translated that over to a table and just computed up. And this is actually the same card on both sides. One's actually obviously electronic and one's paper. But if you notice, the final numbers are different. And that was another thing. We were like, why is it different? And should we really care? And what does it matter? Could that matter a lot or a little at the end of the day? And so we just, we whittle this down. We ask these questions, did these scenarios and did the tables and, and try to figure this out. And it was a challenge. Um, the numbers were all the same throughout the table except for the bottom line. Don't know why. So the lessons learned from this are you got to compare apples to apples when you're looking at your campus, if you're using APA guidelines, to what APA is saying uh, with their matrices. Um, you have to know what your level of one campus looks like to you. If I say, if my VP comes and they say, you know, this doesn't look uh, like, like, like we want it, well, do you want it level of two? Um, well, yeah, I want it this. Okay, well, now you're saying that it's going to be 50 more employees a month. Well, I don't want 50 more employees. Okay, well, now it's going to have to be level three, which is this, and you can have a conversation now because we know what we're talking about. And you have to really understand what you want. You have to know what the seasonal variation is, and that's the irrigation system example I showed you. Um, you know, other things came into play. There was one um, metric that was talking about that, like the aeration for a thousand square feet, and the number was like 45 minutes to aerate a thousand square feet. And we we're like, are they using like clogs or something? Like, I don't know why the number was so high, you know. And so what? what, what and I don't know, maybe it was a typo, but at the end of the day, what if the technology changes and you have to like adapt to that? So just be aware of that. Um, the guidelines may have errors, and that's the case with anything. Our work has errors, all of us works have errors, so you know, use it as a guide. Um, we also found that the rounding errors were significant. They blew the numbers out of the park. And so we had to go to at least the three significant digits to, to wrap our minds around what, what we felt was real, real results. But this one, this blew my mind. So we, again, looked at our campus and the categories that we wanted to map. And we made all those buckets and we made all those different matrices for all those different tasks and categories. And um, APA just recommends these four, which I'm going to show you in a second. And so we had all those results and everything. And at the end of the day, I could delete all of my math for all of the computations for all of the categories except for these four, and the numbers were the same. <laughs> right? It's a crack up. The exact same. It's kind of like if you're hiring someone to clean your house and you want an estimate and you say, well, will you give me an estimate for the time it takes for just to clean up my dog toys and put them in their bins? And they're going to be like, I, yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. But to mop the floors <laughs> is the big time suck, right? And so only focus on the big stuff. The little stuff doesn't matter. To maintain a water area, a green roof, when you're talking about a 900-acre campus, it doesn't matter. It's really, it's really interesting. Um, know your data. We thought we did, and then we started um, going more into it and uh, realized we didn't. So we graphed everything. We charted it. We analyzed it. Here's showing just like, you know, of our flower beds, how much of it is level one and level two. And we might look at that and say, no, that's not right. We have more level one. We feel like there's more level one than that. And then we would dive in deeper. Uh, same thing with... Uh, of the level one, what categorizations are within that mostly? And we might look at this and be like, oh, well, we, we should have, you know, more flower beds in level one and analyze that. And so we did that for level one, level two, level three. Just really compare the data to the microcosm. 
And also keep it simple. This was one of the first diagrams that someone in my staff made. And it was, she was like, oh, this is beautiful. We get this for people's heads and we put it in the database and we take those levels of care and those polygons and we stamp them into the GIS and we geoprocess it. And we bake the math right into that flower bed shape and it computes out. And that script took 45 minutes to run. And we also realized that just because you have this polygon flat level one, well, the front of the building might be level one, but the back of the building's not level one. I mean, there's all these different discrepancies that happen with this type of system. So at the end of the day, we're just pulling the square footages from GIS, keeping the landscape uh, accurate, and then just plugging it into a calculator. You're, you're done. Uh, be open to change. Uh, we worked with our grounds personnel, they kept working with us, and we just had to listen to them, listen to their needs, and change everything because uh, just because we want to use GIS, it wasn't the right tool, to tell you the truth. You know, we, we stepped back and just kept a lot, lot more simple by listening to them. Um, this was the levels of attention example with the baking it in. We never use this anymore. So planning scenarios, this is what we're working on now, and then we're going to create our tool. So here's like looking at the campus 50 to 50, level four, level three, and you can see 71 people, and there's a support by month, and then going into all of level three, it's 103 people, um, scaling up to level two, and, and at 50, 50, we can start seeing where our variation is and start having a conversation with our VP as to what they want to support, what they want the campus to look like, how many people we need to hire, and so forth. And so now we're going to build it. Uh, this is an example of a custom tool that we've built for managing all of our um, equipment that we manage on campus for our users. So we're the IT shop too for facilities, and we manage over like uh, a thousand devices um, for people. So here is, actually, more, I think it's 1,000 people. I don't know. I forget. But so this is just for the campus physical plant. So we have 191 devices for 422 number of users. And you can see the elusive devices. This is all live data. Um, it's a metrics dashboard. So we can keep track of um, their fiscal year projection costs based on total cost of ownership. And if we just want to look at someone who, uh, the department, and this is just their Windows tablets. And if they want to say, well, we need to decrease our costs, let's go ahead and take those Windows tablets. And we have 30 of them. And instead of doing 30, let's do 15 of those in iPad Pros and see that our total cost of ownership goes down $16,000 a year. This is no different than if we acquire parcels and now we have to maintain an extra thousand, two thousand, hundred thousand square foot of softscape, how many more people we need to hire. It's no different. It's the same exact process. And that's it.